organizers of the uh, the Women's March uh, plan on having, uh, of course, their um, uh, next march taking place on the 19th or the 20th. Uh, and, of course, they're going to make Santoya Brown's Casey Central part of the day's demonstrations. But they've been having significant drama in the Women's March organization uh, dealing with uh, their leadership, Tamika Mallory, Linda Sarsour, Carmen Perez, and also Bob Bland. Of course, uh, they have been under fire uh, from people for a variety of we reasons, some saying uh, that accusing them of anti-Semitism, others saying that they're not handling finances correctly. Uh, there are others who are saying that uh, they're getting too much of the attention and too much of the credit, and what others should be. And of course, you have some uh, folks who were founders even calling for all of them to step down from <laughs> leadership. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, here's a word from one of our partners. I want you to write this <laughs> website down, marijuanastock.org. <laughs> ORG, MarijuanaStock.org. Now I'm going to tell you why. As we transition into the holiday season, this is the time when we start thinking about giving and sharing. Sometimes the best gift that you can give someone is an opportunity that could potentially change their lives. That's why Transatlantic Real Estate has created this incredible investment opportunity for the everyday investor, and it involves legal marijuana and crowdfunding. Now, we all know that legal marijuana has created one of the fastest growing industries in the country, multi-billion dollar industry. We also know that crowdfunding has made it easier to be an early investor of an opportunity. But it gets even better. Transatlantic Real Estate folks, here's what they've done with their business model. They buy land that supports marijuana grow operations and lease it to licensed high paying tenants, which means that you are the landlord of a licensed marijuana farm in a high growth market. Now, for a limited time, you can invest, invest as little as 300 bucks up to $10,000 before the company goes public. Now, here's some more good news. They, they've extended their offer. OK, which means you still have time to be involved if you take action now. But here's the deal, though. You must complete and confirm your application to participate. You have to complete the process. Now, a lot of you are going to spend your, all your money buying gifts of something you're not going to be able to use in a year. But this is an investment that actually could pay off over a number of years, even decades. You could also make this an investment for someone special. Now, all you got to do is go to marijuana stock. At org. That's marijuanastock.org to get in the game. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. Well, last night, Tamika, Linda, and Carmen dropped this video on Instagram uh, speaking directly to their critics. Over the last few weeks, we've been spending a lot of time in the midst of planning a march, trying to answer questions and concerns of individuals, of reporters and others about who we really are, about what we've done. And there have been accusations against us, uh, things that have been very troubling, things that, that do not represent who we truly are. And so instead of us, um, you know, spending time going back and forth one on one with everybody and wasting a lot of time time, we want to have a public conversation with three individuals specifically, and that is Vanessa Rubel, who was one of the first people to bring us into the Women's March, Evie Harmon, who we met when we first got here, and Mercy Morganfield from Washington, D.C., who came later. These three women have lied on us. No doubt they have lied on us, and we want to have these conversations in public, not behind closed doors, but in public. Mm. Now, here's a piece. Shades of cold. I am more than happy. <laughs> we say roll. I'm more than happy to moderate this conversation <laughs> on to have it in public uh, because it really yes, has been going on for the past year. Uh, things begin to ramp up, of course, uh, when Tamika and Carmen uh, sat on stage at Savior's Day, uh, where Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke. Right. Uh, many folks have been ripped them, uh, saying that because of uh, Farrakhan's comments on that particular day and his past comments, that they should denounce him. Uh, Tamika has made it clear that the, that, the, that the Fruit of Islam, Nation of Islam, gave her significant support uh, when uh, she suffered a murder in her family. Mm -hmm. uh, Lena Sarsour, they've also been attacking her as well. And also Carmen, it's been lots, lots of drama here. And you have, uh, you have folks who are Jewish, who are criticizing them. You have folks who are white. And you have other critics who are saying that the, you have white women who don't like the fact that you have the people who really are running the organization yeah. are three women of color. I mean, it's a loads, loads of drama. I want to bring in our panel here. Now, granted, look, we're all talking to all men here about the Women's March, uh, but it is still <laughs> a story uh, that is quite interesting. There also was a piece that was done, I think, in Tablet. Uh, I think it's what it's called. Um, I saw uh, and uh, and and so it's a uh, 
uh, of course, Jay, who's my producer, Jay's Jewish, he loves Jewish publication. Jay would know. Appreciate that, Jay. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and I saw the story, and it was, and so again, uh, Greg, I want to start with you. I mean, the, the, the amount, first of all, let's put this in historical perspective. Yes, sir. Okay? For people who believe that everything was great, wonderful, and just excited, and even kill the civil rights movement, oh. has no understanding that if you read this story here, no. I mean, you really see shades of what you've always seen yeah. in movements and organizations where certain people ascend to leadership. You know what, uh, Roland, I'm glad you said that. But th those might want to jot down a title. You're always talking about books. Like I said, you got to start that book club, brother, because you constantly talking about reading. Mm -hmm. Harold Cruz, many people know his book, The Crisis of the Negro Intellectual. But the book that he wrote entitled Plural But Equal talks about this tension at the heart of the black Jewish struggle in civil rights. You had Jewish organizations that wanted to advise black folk in places like the NAACP, uh, Major Spingarn, who was informing on the NAACP because he was working with the military at the same time. They want to advise black people on what to do, and at the same time, they were telling Jewish organizations something different. In other words, everybody want to intervene and tell black folks how to struggle, mm -hmm. but they don't want black folks to participate in that conversation for themselves or for their organizations. So that thread comes through the 60s. You see it in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. You see a, a, a split in SNCC. Many SNCC folks who are still alive, still very sensitive about that. You see it in the Jesse Jackson campaign, the so-called Jaime Town remark. You see it with Martin Luther King. You see, so in other words, this is nothing new. Barrakhan. This whole notion of anti-Semitism is, is utterly absurd. Why do I say that? What is a Semite? The Arabs are Semites. These are Semitic people. If you're talking about Sephardic Jews, Ashkenazim Jews, European Jewry, we don't want to put too fine a point on this, but what we're really talking about is a very important and heavy political lobby, not only in this country, but worldwide. We see what happened with Mark Hill at the UN a couple of weeks ago, trying to bring pressure to bear and telling people, you can't struggle on your own terms. In other words, you have to do it the way we want you to do it, and if you don't do it the way we want you to do it, we are going to take over. And I, I, much respect to these sisters, partic particularly Sister Tamika, because there's so much pressure on So e even if you take the issue that exists between folks who are criticizing them, who are Jewish, and saying uh, that they should be condemning fair conflict, anti-Semitic, you also have the attacks uh, on them in terms of organizational. Yes. Again, I look at large organizations. I mean, look, during the Black Freedom Movement, mm -hmm. Thurgood Marshall was highly critical of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, oh, Martin goes out here, give these speeches, and all he does is leave us with the damn legal bills. Okay? No, that, <laughs> no, that, that actually no, happened. That's true. That's then, true. Then, of course, then, of course, you had Adam Clayton Powell, oh. who could not stand Dr. King that's right. and could not stand other the civil rights leaders Why because he, 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 felt, he right. felt he was the pre... because that's he right. was the one who was moving legislation on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. that he was the preeminent civil rights leader. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, uh, you also had the friction. Of course, SNCC, and mm. uh, call, snick people calling the king, here come Deloitte. Yeah. Mm. Call him Deloitte. Yeah. Okay, that was a nickname for him. Mm. So you had all of these things that were going on that were happening. Uh, and so it's people need to understand it's not a shock that you would have people complaining, saying, oh, uh, Tamika, Carmen, Linda, y'all, and Bob, y'all getting all the credit mm. when it's these chapters out here who are doing all the work. If you read Today is the Birthday of Ella Baker, How about if that? you read Barbara Ransby's Come on, book Come on. on Ella Baker, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Ella Baker yes. had tension between her and Dr. King because yes. Dr. King believed it was pulpit to pew. She felt it was it's pew, pew but, to pulpit. And she wouldn't let King or any other organization at those young people. That's why they worked came to SNCC. SNCC. Right. right. So that, that was a meeting at the president's house at Shaw University right. between he, uh, Dr. the president, Y.T. Walker, and Dr. King. She busted into the meeting. <laughs> right. Like, no, I ain't going to let y'all take this over because SCLC gave the initial funding for the conference at Shaw. That's and right. so, so it's not a shock to me, uh, Eugene, to see people complaining about certain individuals getting all the credit and the glory, being named Glamour Women of the Year, being on Essence Magazine covers, mm -hmm. people saying, well, how dare y'all get all of this? You've always seen that in large organizations. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the thing is this, uh, the criticism of these ladies, uh, you know, they may, it may have now reached new heights, but it's not new. I mean, I remember on, on, on our previous show, uh, you know, we had Janae, uh, who was very heavily uh, involved with the Women's March, you know, come in and, and give us a lot of the backstory about what was going on. And, you know, you know, a lot of the 
white women were being very critical of Tamika and, and Carmen uh, at that time. You know, largely, you know, a lot of BS reasons. Um, you know, a lot of reasons that did not have, hold any weight. But, you know, this is a, an extension of this. This isn't anything new. This is, you know, something that, you know, has been going it's on. It's part for, of leadership. But, part but, of you, leadership, but you also see, saw, Scott, I was at, it was very interesting. So I was at mm -hmm. uh, the Women's March Convention in Detroit. And you had all these battles going on because uh, they asked me to um, M MC uh, a part of the program. So they had these people who were saying, oh, no, he can't MC because we think he's homophobic. B.S. <laughs> uh, and then the three of them were like, what the hell y'all talking about? Rolla has been a huge supporter of everything that we have done uh, in terms of amplifying our voices and that of women. Mm -hmm. And so what you have here is you have in the Women's March, you got all these folks, all these competing interests. Mm -hmm. And then one of the probably the most well attended uh, session there was really this discussion uh, when it came to the issue of white women uh, and the movement. Uh, and, and you had all this sort of stuff like that. Like I think, I, like I had some people. That, matter of fact, it was so it was a, such a trip because when I was on stage, uh, it, again, talk about how white women operate. So I was on stage and I said, if you told me, I said, well, if three thousand women are gathered, that's a place I want to be. <laughs> and so, oh, we're, so uh, two white women come up to me at the end and say, oh my God, uh, that was sexist. That, that. You were objectified. And I was like, what the hell y'all talking about? You violated and, and, me and, too wait and, they, and they tried, oh. they tried, wait a minute, they tried, but his was a trip. Wow. So these two white women hmm. tried to jam me up. <laughs> But these black women who were waiting to get a photo were like, oh, hell no, y'all going with that bullshit. Right. They were like, no. So it was a trip. So you had these black women yes. who were checking these white women like, no, no, no. Who the hell y'all think y'all talking to? Y'all ain't going to diss Roland, who, ha who has had our back mm -hmm. this whole time. Very much so. And, so, and, and again, somebody's, and I'm looking at two white women, and I literally like, okay, I ain't got time for y'all. Because again, I'm like, y'all full of it. Yes. Nobody else in the room was sitting there going, oh, my God, I'm sitting here with Rosa Clemente and, and the rest of them. But it was these two white women who were sort of like, OK, why is this man speaking as if you can't have male supporters of the Women's March? And so it's a whole <laughs> lot of but that's stuff. Whole, the thing is, that's it's a <laughs> lot of stuff that's going on here that goes beyond this criticism of Linda, Tamika, and uh, Carmen over Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, we, we need to exhale a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Everybody just needs to exhale, maybe hire a mediator. I mean, the reality is this. You've got multiplicity of women and interests and issues in the Women's March, and with that, is a is a not a cesspool, but a but a uh, but a but a but a, 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 a pool of varied interests that are not consistent with one another, and managing those inconsistencies and putting all those issues into one pot uh, to make changes for women across the board. I just think inherent in the mixture is going to be a challenge. And Greg, look, we have to. We also have yeah, to deal. Tough, tough. We have to deal. And again, this is where I think for a lot of people. And this is why that session was so important in Detroit. There are a lot of white women who have no clue about history. Yep. When you have some of the, the, the foremost women leaders of the suffrage movement right. who are racist. Come on. Yeah. Liz who are flat Stanton. out Come racist. On, brothers. Come on. Who made it clear. Thing. Who don't realize they are. No, 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 they no, 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 they no, 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 had with National Organization for Women. Yep. They were like, no, that's a white women's organization. Right. Because we probably need to understand that women were only included in the 1964 Civil Rights Act because the racist uh, Judge Smith out of Virginia thought by putting women into the bill, that's right. that okay. actually was going to kill right. the bill mm -hmm. right. when in fact it actually it helped, helped it. its passage. passage. And so the, so the reason, so then if you go look at Title IX, Okay, which was passed mm -hmm. in 72. Title IX had nothing to do with sports. That's right. Title IX was about opening the professional schools to women. That's right. White women benefited who became doctors, lawyers, engineers, scientists, mm -hmm. professors. That's right. And they benefited from 
1964 Civil Rights Act, That's right. which black people made possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got this, so, so okay. this, this, this whole, right. I'm going to go on a great, so this tension That's right. with these women of color, yes. And white women yes. has deep historical roots, Greg. Roland, you know, what you experienced in Detroit, very important. And it's important that you talk about people like Rosa Clemente. I mean, we're talking about, the, talk about people talk about intersectionality. We think about Audre Lorde, who brought this up in the 70s and 80s. You know, we are many things at once. When people talk about Sojourner Truth, mm -hmm. the reason she has to say, I, am I not a woman too? Mm -hmm. Is because white women are trying to leapfrog over this race struggle mm -hmm. to deal, deal with this gender struggle. So this whole ain't our woman speech comes out of that. And in terms, talk about the National Organization of Women. Mm -hmm. Who is the patron saint in many ways of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Polly Murray. Mm -hmm. She talks about the great Polly Murray, one of the greatest intellectuals of the 20th century, a lawyer, in uh, fact, ordained as a saint in her Episcopalian tradition. Mm -hmm. This black woman is the one who forces the issue of gender into that conversation. So the 64 Civil Rights Act, Title IX, you have a black woman sitting there, an intellectual, help write the Ghanaian Constitution, force it, Howard Law School grad puts this into the, injects this into the bloodstream. So when you see these sisters protect you, Roland, on this issue, because nobody, look, it's four men here today, right. but tomorrow it's gonna be some women, but yesterday it was some women, it's always, you know, <laughs> always try, who's raising this gender issue and why? Race okay. is at the okay. center of okay. this, and it's out of well, it's telling and you that's, that. And that's, okay. and but, that's, and I just need everyone to understand, that's when you, with this struggle that is going on, uh, then, of course, you because it's, it's not only that, it's a black woman who's in D.C., mm -hmm. who they name-checked, uh, who was highly critical of them, mm -hmm. saying, wait a minute, it's the local chapters. But again, let me, let me provide for people so you understand the tension. This is no different than when you had NAACP chapters mm -hmm. who felt national leadership was getting too much credit, and then the chapters were doing all the work. Right. You need to understand, again, history. That's right. your, your, your organizations have always had that. If you really want to understand it, go read the book, I Never Had It Made. Come on, bro. Some of the most vicious takedown of, of, uh, of Roy Wilkins came from Jackie Robinson. That's right. Who ripped Roy Wilkins because he said how, how he was egotistical. Keep in mind. And against Mega Everett. Yeah, and keep in mind, 1959. <laughs> Come on, brother. Roy Wilkins called Dr. King a radical That's right. because he felt Dr. King was getting too much attention. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. folks, don't be confused by <laughs> what's happening Vietnam in the War. Women's March right Vietnam now War. with Tamika, but, with uh, Linda, with Carmen, well, with Bob Bland. Watch this, with, I mean, you've <laughs> always seen this. Watch okay. this. Colorism, watch this. This is a very sensitive topic, because it's like you say, once you read Mary McLeod Bethune and Mary Church Terrell, mm -hmm. these are two titans. But if you look very closely, look at the correspondence of what's going on, right. there were tensions between those two. Okay, but, but, but you gotta say, it, what okay, Roland's saying is very true. I understand, it's true. And you all both have given us all, and everybody watching the show, a history lesson. Right. Because right? well, you, 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 you had no clue well, about yeah, the history lesson. But well, go ahead. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I know. I know. But go ahead. Hold on. It's very informative. Even for me. I love it. But the reality is this. What matters most isn't the resolution. Mm. I pose a question to you. Yes, How yes. do they, no, 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 How do no, they no, resolve no, this no, issue it is. with that deep no, no, historical no, no, roots? No, no, The reason you have to go through the historical timeline is to get people to understand that this is the reality mm -hmm. of organizations maturing. So you, you very, it's unresolvable. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. That's not what I just said. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I said is this is the reality of when you have organizations that are being formed and that are being created, mm -hmm. where you go through this. You go through these tectonic battles. People forget W.E.B. Du Bois has significant battles with the NAACP when he led the Crisis Magazine right. over mm -hmm. what he was writing and reporting right. over what they wanted. Yeah, right. So you always have that. Right. I think what Tamika is saying in that video is, okay, versus Y'all talking over here, and versus y'all talking over here, and versus a couple telling the tablet, versus this sister in D.C. Right, right. She's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Have a public conversation. Mm -hmm. Because, see, when you put folks in a public conversation, right. then, right. then, it's then it's right, now you're accountable, right. and now you can't hide behind mm -hmm. quotes. Nope. You can't hide, and now you are facing your accusers. Well, you know what's And now different. your accusers can also be checked on what they have to say. But, Ron, you know what's different? Mm -hmm. What's yeah. different now is, of course, we live in a different age because of technology. When SNCC went through the battle that led to John Lewis losing his chairmanship 
and Stokely Carmichael becoming the chair, they met in private. That's a that's a private argument. In fact, talk about self criticism. And when you meet in private, uh, then there are different interpretations of yep. what happened in the private meeting. That's very true. What they're saying no. here is no, no. 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 There's been publicly no. but, but, where ain't nobody. But 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 no. it's not a, or, the organization is forming out of a movement, as you said. Right. The birthing pains then become very public when you're living in an age of social media. When, yeah. Whereas the SNCC kids used to criticize Stokely Carmichael. You hear Joyce and Dory Ladner and them. They referred to him as Stokely Star Michael. Why? Because you don't meet the press. <laughs> uh, but now when you have Twitter and Facebook and Periscope. Right. Instant leaders. Yeah, there you go. Right. And, and, and and I'll make this. I'll make this but last. It's so petty. And, 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 no, 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 so no, no. It's not. It's that, actually it's not, because these are the growing pains. And I'll make this last point that people need quite need to understand, because what happens is, and I and I read that story. And there were people who were saying, oh, you know, but this movement, Eugene had no leaders, folks. <laughs> Here's the reality. Okay. The same thing happened when you had the May Day marches with Latinos all across the country. Do you know why that actually failed? Because they had no leaders. Let me be clear. I know it sounds cute and it sounds wonderful when people say, oh, no, we're not going to have any leaders. Here's the reality. You can't show me a successful movement Without that doesn't have leadership and hierarchy. The problem is, and this is where media comes in, there are people who are intoxicated by this medium, mm -hmm. okay? I didn't want to make a commentary, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Oh, man. <laughs> this is what I need y'all to understand. Come on, brother. <laughs> this medium is intoxicating. This medium is seductive. What did Elijah Muhammad warn Malcolm X about? That's right. He said, beware of the flash bulbs That's right. and the TV cameras. That's right. It is the same thing. It happens in the reverse because then somebody who's not on stage, then somebody who's not on magazine covers, then somebody who is not being lavished with attention, all of a sudden they then become upset by it. I'll use my recent interview that I did with Reverend Dr. James Lawson. This is what he said. He said, I was meant to be behind scenes. He said the last image I have of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was him being on the front row and me being in my place on the back row. I've said this about leadership for years. Not everybody can be a head coach. Head coaches need great assistant coaches, need a great defensive coordinator, an offensive coordinator, a wide receivers coach, a defensive line coach. Uh, there are multiple folks. There's a trainer. There's somebody who does nutrition, somebody who does the weight room. But everybody can't be the head coach. <laughs> the problem in organizations is that there are people who are jealous of leadership. I am not absolving anybody in the Women's March who's in leadership of any responsibility. But what I'm saying is you have to understand how seductive media is. And there are others who don't like it when somebody else gets the credit mm -hmm. and say, why are you getting more credit than someone else? Because it is a natural form of leadership. The person who is in a leadership position is who people go to for quotes. It's the person who's on television, the person who's on radio, the person who is in newspaper. And so maybe what, to your point, Scott, how do you resolve this? What needs to happen is the people who are critical of them for the attention they're getting, they need to check their motives. Exactly. Because what you should be asking yourself is, why did you get involved in the Women's March? Was it about being on a magazine cover? Was it about being in uh, uh, newspapers and on television shows? Or was it actually about the work? If you a Reverend Dr. James Lawson type person, you know what you're concerned about? The work. Mm -hmm. He is one of our greatest organizers yes. in history. Yes. Many of you have never even heard of him. You have never even heard of him speak. Today, Ella Baker was born in 1903 on this day. Come on, brother. She is arguably not the, the matter of fact, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund put a tweet out saying uh, she was one of the most important women leaders. And I said no. no. I said she was arguably the most important civil rights leader because it was Ella Baker who went from progressive organizations in the 1930s and 40s. That's right. To leadership in the NAACP as a, uh, working on the national office and going out in the field to then going to the SCLC and then going into SNCC. She served as the continuum in those organizations. She literally constructed SCLC, right. not Dr. King, right. not Wyatt T. Walker. Right. She literally built SCLC. She was the one who actually helped form and shape SNCC. 
the point there is, most of y'all don't even know who Ella Baker is. Of course not. Because she wasn't in the newspapers on television. Mm -hmm. She wasn't Dr. King. She wasn't Ralph Abernathy. Uh, she wasn't Roy Wilkins. She wasn't uh, Whitney Young. She wasn't, she wasn't James Farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't uh, John Lewis. She wasn't in that core of leadership. And so what should be happening here is, in the Women's March, as in any organization, ask yourself the question, why am I here? Is it about the work or is it about attention? And once you deal with that, you can then deal with the rest of the stuff. But I dare say, after I read that entire tablet article, critical of them on all kinds of reasons about anti-Semitism and Farrakhan and organization and money, you know what really stood out? People who didn't like the fact that they were getting the attention mm -hmm. more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Check your motive before you check anything else. <laughs>